in December 2022, the most far-right government in Israel's history came to power. Notable inclusions are National Security Minister Ben Gavir, previously convicted of supporting a terrorist organization, and Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich, a settler well-known for racist comments and extreme policies. They quickly approved plans to build thousands of homes for Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank, construction that's illegal under international law. The new policy led to an increase in Israeli raids and attacks by both Israeli settlers and Palestinian fighters. These are scenes from Hawara in February. Hundreds of Israelis from a nearby settlement went on a rampage through the town of 8,000 Palestinians after two settlers were gunned down. Smodrich called for Hawara to be erased. Huara was targeted again on Friday. Israeli settlers shot a resident in the heart after a Palestinian gunman opened fire at an Israeli vehicle. Palestinian armed resistance has increased since March last year after Israel's incursion at Al-Aqsa Mosque and renewed raids on the occupied West Bank and Gaza. Israel has repeatedly said it will root out these fighters. In early July, it launched a two-day assault in Janine refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. More than 3,000 Palestinians fled the airstrikes, bulldozers, armored tanks and drones. And this was the result. Janine's deputy governor said 80% of the homes of the camp were destroyed, damaged or burned. Attacks and raids take place in occupied territories nearly every day. In April, Israeli forces attacked Muslim worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan prayers, an action the UN condemned as excessive. And in recent days, thousands of ultra-nationalist Jews have been entering the mosque compound, escorted by Israeli police, a move condemned by the Jordanian Waqf the custodians of the mosque. Hamas officials have long said they will respond to Israel at a time and place of their choosing. But Saturday's attack seemed to take many by surprise. Laura Khan, Al Jazeera. So there's been a global concern over the spike in violence between Israelis and Palestinians. We've got two correspondents monitoring that. Uh, Ros Jordan's in Washington, D.C., Harry Fawcett in London. We're going to start with Washington, D.C. and Rosalind. Uh, so, Roz, what's, tell us more about the U.S. response and how that's shaping up. Well, essentially, U.S. government support is for Israel. Hamas has been a terrorist organization, according to the U.S. government, since 1997. So you would be hard-pressed to find anyone, whether in the Biden-Harris administration or in Congress, for that matter, anyone who would support Hamas just as an organization, never mind the attack that was launched overnight Friday into Saturday into southern Israel. Uh, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has made the rounds of the Sunday public affairs shows here in Washington, and he not only repeated the U.S. government's support for Israel and its right to defend itself, its territory, and its citizens, but Blinken has also indicated that the U.S. is going to announce some new steps, some new support for Israel as it tries to respond to this attack later on Sunday. We don't know yet the shape of what this support is, but supposedly it is in response to additional aid that the Israeli government has made to Washington in the last 24 hours. It is also worth uh, pointing out that uh, Blinken, during his rounds of phone calls on Saturday, did have occasion to speak with Mahmoud Abbas, the uh, Palestinian Authority uh, leader, as well as speaking with other regional leaders, including his counterparts in Egypt, in Jordan, in Turkey, uh, really to try to figure out how they all can try to de-escalate tensions, even though at this point it's now about how to end this two-day-long war. Roz, thanks for that. That's a picture in Washington, D.C. What's the story in Europe? Uh, Harry Fawcett standing by there in London for us. And Harry, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, has been speaking to some European leaders. 
That's right, yes. He says he's spoken to the leaders of Germany, Ukraine, Italy and Britain, uh, saying that each of those leaders expressed their unqualified support for Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, also, another line just coming through from Germany in the last few minutes, that the uh, government is reviewing its policy of aid to Palestinians worth hundreds of millions of euros or, or U.S. dollars per year. The minister in charge of that program saying these attacks mark a terrible fracture and some debates between right and left uh, in German politics, uh, some on the right and the Conservatives saying that a new start is needed and that terrorists should never be funded again. Um, there has also been uh, a much wider scale of condemnation from other European powers as well. I think a lot of the concentration, a lot of the reporting certainly is about the sheer scale of the targeting, killing, kidnapping of civilians on such a huge scale inside Israeli territory and taking so many of those captives back into Gaza. Uh, some of those are being found to be foreign nationals, one missing Britain, uh, one woman whose body was apparently displayed, uh, now said to be a German citizen. So concerns on that front as well and concerns being expressed about Jewish communities inside Europe as well. Uh, the Italian government, the French and German governments talking about the need to ensure security at Jewish sites. And we've had a tweet from the Home Secretary here in the UK, the Interior Minister, uh, on Sunday talking about uh, rejecting and uh, stopping any attempts to stir up hatred against British Jews, doing everything necessary to protect Jewish communities and showing zero tolerance for what she called the glorification of terrorism. She's calling for the police to use the full force of the law against anyone exhibiting displays of support for Hamas and other such groups. Harry, thanks for that. Uh, that's a picture in Europe. Harry Fawcett reporting from London. Let's cross now to Jan Negeland, who's uh, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, joins us now from Oslo. Uh, good to see you there, Mr. Egeland. First of all, your reaction uh, to this escalating crisis? Well, a, a terrible situation has uh, overnight gotten much, much worse. My organization has been on the ground now for decades uh, in Gaza, in the West Bank. It will become much worse now because of this attack against the Israeli civilians. Mm. I've followed myself now the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for nearly 50 years. Every time leaders, military and other leaders, choose to exert violence on civilians, they inflict hor horrors, not only on the other side, but also on their, on their um, own side. This will become much, much worse in the next days. Apart from the, the tragedy of what's happened, it's the fact that this, it was a seemingly indiscriminate attack by Hamas fighters on just so many Israelis. Yeah, indeed, completely indiscriminate. The, the, the rockets are, the missiles are, but also go, they go uh, around shooting random civilians. They took hostages among random civilians. Of course, this is now the, the images spread around the world. It's a disaster for, for, for the Palestinian cause, because now the retaliation will be enormous. It will, again, be civilians paying the price. Uh, there is one way out, and that is a very strong united international pressure on all the political and military elites uh, that they have to de-escalate and have to now to look at the root causes for these conflicts. Yeah, but will they? We've been saying that for, for decades, haven't we? And, and the Israeli perspective is yeah. that this was an entirely unprovoked attack. And certainly, uh, it's time to consider, as a matter of urgency, the, the cause and effect here of all those people living under blockade in Gaza, 56 years of military occupation and so on and so forth. But we've talked about that, as I say, for many, many years, and it's got nowhere. And now we are in this terrible situation. Yes, we are. And, and uh, then one, one is to, uh, talking about teaching the other side a lesson so they will not repeat any violence. Of course, this leads to more cycles of, of violence. And that's my point. The mm. sites are incapable of putting an end to the endless cycles of violence. That's why we need the US, the Arab countries. There has been talks of late, 
that can be against uh, talks, but then there has to be much more pressure. The retaliation, I mean, the uh, Hamas says, this is revenge. I Israel will now rightfully say, well, we were attacked. Now we will exert uh, uh, revenge. Uh, it will be uh, with children paying the price. Mm. Uh, you hear all round condemnation from the likes of the US, the UK and France, but there's no mention, no reference to the causes behind this. And, and so why is that? And why is there such a failure of the international effort? Well, I mean, the international effort, I mean, to, to, today, any politicians in the West will look at the uh, Hamas attack and will say, we're with Israel and it's right to defend themselves. But, of course, part of the problem is that we humanitarians, we are neutral, impartial, independent and on the ground and in this crossfire. What we see is to completely polarize images of what is happening. In, in, in large parts of the Arab world, a large part of the non-Western world, they will now watch uh, mosques and apartment blocks and so on being attacked. Of course, in the West, in America and, and in Israel, they see children being kidnapped, uh, humiliated, killed by, by, uh, by armed and uh, grown men. Uh, those are the two images. And that they lead to the two sides dehumanizing each other. Right. Uh, from the point of view of people on the ground and in the, as you say, in the coming crossfire that's, that seems to be inevitably coming, uh, and the children and the elderly and everybody who's there within Gaza about to, to face this, from a humanitarian perspective, what do you do to prepare for it and, and how can you make things easier when it does come? Well, I mean, we, in Norwegian Refugee Council, we have hundreds of colleagues on the ground in the mm. West Bank and in Gaza. We're there. We have tried to rebuild now time and again in Gaza. Each time you are able to rebuild fewer of the, of the total uh, amount of, of, of civilian housing that has, has been destroyed before there is a new attack. Same thing uh, this time. Uh, the border closures will make it very difficult for us to come with, uh, with relief to people. Uh, there will be power shortages, so the health colleagues will not even have uh, power for, for hospitals, uh, except generators that will be soon be lacking fuel. Uh, it will be a nightmare even to help uh, the innocent civilians. Uh, Jan Egeland, good to speak to you and get your perspective on this important perspective. Thank you so much. Jan Egeland, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, speaking to us from Oslo. Thank you.